judges judging our different categories. And so we're going to chat today with Mike and Jim Ring that Mike is on the, and here comes Jim. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, Mike got pretty fancy up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike and Jim Ring are uh, really premier builders that have, that have come on strong in the last few years. They've always been finalists in the SEMA Battle of the Builders. And last year they won the Batter, Battle of the Builders Award with a 69 Camaro. Uh, they also last year at SEMA won two design awards, one from GM, one from Ford. Uh, they're known for their clean designs. They, they kind of uh, like to maintain the original beauty of the vehicle and they make a lot of modifications that, that aren't always uh, noticeable to the, to the untrained eye, but uh, they do a lot to it. And um, they're kind of unique in, a, in another way. They are located in uh, in uh, Spring Green, Wisconsin, and they run a collision shop. So about 15% of their business is an active collision shop. So uh, they really know a lot about our industry as well as just, you know, being uh, custom builders. You guys normally have about two or three builds a year. Is, is that right? You're right, Dale, yeah. But I understand a little more. <laughs> yeah, I understand you have like seven in process this year. Yeah, I don't, I don't. We kind of let it get away from us a little bit. Normally, yes, yeah. too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. How much time is invested in an average build? Well, the bigger builds, like we take the SEMA, about seven to eight thousand hours, and the smaller one, like we just did a. Uh, there's a wrapper that we just did a a blazer for a k5 it was real nice but that was about two thousand hours so it ranges and then we still do a regular restoration to like i said the high-end builds we yeah. added a lot of a lot of collision work especially this time of the year with the the deer really moving right now so yeah <laughs> that adds pretty busy you're definitely in uh, deer country okay. yeah. Um, that blazer you mentioned, is that the one with 14, uh, 1,400 horsepower? No, that's the one we're doing right now. Yeah. Um, that's We haven't shown anybody too much of that one. It was going to be in the Battle of the Builders, but they asked us to be judges, so um, we're not going to do anything with it. Yeah. So we're pretty close to that. We're just doing some interior work on it right now. and. Uh, getting the wheels mounted finally. We had to get another set cut, so that'll be done today. So yeah, we got a, we got a lot going on, but it's not that blazer. Just uh, just the sound of 1,400 horsepower in a short wheel base blazer made us uh, take it down to 1,200 now to make us all feel better. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Talk well, about. Guys, it. I, yeah. I just thinking uh, you put 1,400 horsepower on that short wheelbase. Uh, yeah. You're gonna you're gonna torque the frame, aren't you? The first time it hooks up. Now, this isn't the normal frame. There's nothing left of normal on it. It's <laughs> it's more it's, it's more built like a uh, uh, trophy truck, like a trophy truck, like an off road. Uh, you know, it's got twin okay. shocks on each wheel. It's it's set up for maybe not that much. Fourteen, form, in, 14 inches of travel. There's a lot of travel. It's a lot of truck, but. It still doesn't matter. You're right. It's too much. It's too much. Yeah. Yeah. And I never thought I'd say that because I didn't think there was such a thing as too much, but that's too much. <laughs> um, we uh, so if you if anyone has a question for the Ring Brothers, go ahead and and put it on chat, and I'll read it uh, for them. We have one here. Uh, do you think it's okay to boost a 6.4 Hemi? And if so, what pressure? This is with a, uh, Jerry owns a Shelby Cobra and a Dodge Challenger. Yeah, but honestly, when it comes to engines, we we uh, stick to the professionals that, that we work with. Uh, there's a guy by the name of, of Gary, uh, there's Wagner Motorsports, who uh, pretty much takes care of all of our motors. So that's probably not a good question for me. Uh, and or Mike, correct. Uh, if if you got a golf swing question, he could probably answer that. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, you know we. That's one thing about us is we're we're smart enough to to stay in the wheelhouse what we know. And over the years, we've lined ourselves with people that do certain things, and we really stick to that because 
for those issues, if you have any, we know the guys that can take care of it. And they're, all we know is that new hell offense we put in a charger. I don't know what kind of boost they put in that, but that's way too much too. That's insane motors. So yeah, them Hemis make a lot of power. They sure do. Clint Marlowe wants to know, do you still have your Winnebago RV? And do you actually use it for RVing? <laughs> Honestly, that was uh, that was really the dumbest thing we ever did in our lifetime. Uh, but it was the most fun. But it was it was certainly the most fun. Uh, uh, again, a thousand horsepower in a in a seventy two Winnebago Brave is is like a twenty twenty one or twenty two foot truck. Uh, the thing was crazy. I mean, in a in a cool night, which we have a lot of them in in Wisconsin, <laughs> it'll uh, the thing would pull the left front wheel off the ground. In a Winnebago, you have to understand with dual rear wheels. So, again, too much horsepower. But the answer is no. We don't have it. We uh, we sold it to a good customer of ours that had to have it. And uh, he then in turn sold it to another guy from down south. And now the, the guy that we sold it to is trying to buy it back. But we were the idiots on that one. We, we had no faith in ourselves, And I, I think we sold it for 50. And I think the last time it got sold was for 150. Right. So who's the dummy? <laughs> <laughs> I had the, uh, the pleasure of seeing that and being inside of it. And it's, it was something else. I think it was great. <laughs> Yeah, it made everybody smile. It didn't matter if you were eight years old or 80 years old, people came sure. out of that smiling. And we had everybody sign their name when they went in. So there was a lot of signatures on that thing. <laughs> yeah, there was a, you could see when you pulled up to other people in their cars as you're driving down the road with it, the, the father in the car would say, kids, don't look at them, you know, don't, don't stare don't at that car. At them. <laughs> Uh, hey, I got another question from Jerry. Um, what, what are your opinions on Ford racing crate motor, specifically the 351 W based 427? We put one in. We actually put one of them in a vehicle. They run great. You know, you can't go wrong with any of them crate motors that them guys are building, especially for the price. Uh, um, seriously, the, the price on these things uh, is a lot of bang for your buck. I don't think you can go wrong with that motor. We've actually used that particular motor. It runs great. It's got great power. And the sound, honestly, on a push rod motor is you can't match. It. It can't you can't beat that sound. So, I mean that that 427 we have here, it just everybody smiles when you start it. It doesn't matter if we had a thousand horse elephant or a thousand horse LS. That that motor you're talking about definitely sounds better yeah, than all you of them. won't be disappointed in that one good bill wants to know uh what came first the body shop or the custom building honestly uh we both had real jobs a long time ago um, we <laughs> we uh i was working for i was actually a crane operator for a construction company and uh that was during mike when he was in the navy and uh, got back, you know, my sister called me, there was an environmental company uh, that does like fire and, and water cleanup and, and asbestos. And so uh, my sister called me right after I got married, my wife and I had moved to Denver, Colorado, and I always wanted to get closer to home. So we moved to Chicago and uh, uh, I just lived in Chicago for like a year and a half and I just, I hated it. I wanted, knew I wanted to raise my kids back home. So I moved home, I started a small little body shop with a friend of mine and uh, Misery Likes Company, I asked my brother to come back. And, uh, you know, that was kind of the start of it. We just, it's all we really did was, you know, we were always hot rod guys, so we were messing with something, but really we figured out to pay the bills, you had to do collision work. And, uh, and that's really what got us going is, is just doing collision work. So yeah, the collision started it. Jim always wanted to tinker and do some because we love cars, but we knew to pay the bills we had to keep in collision. And, and today it still stands. I mean, there's definitely, it's easier money in the collision. Um, but for us, it's the way of seeing how cars are built today and incorporate a lot of, incorporate a lot of that stuff in our build. So it's, it's something we wouldn't give up not only not that it's that big a part of our business but it allows us to get the reps that people don't see 
I mean, that's kind of how we met Dale, how we have a rep that supported us and we get to see the latest in all the technology that's out there that a regular hot, hot rod shop doesn't get. So for us, we won't give up the collision portion for a lot of reasons. And then, <clears throat> thanks, Darren asked, uh, how did you get into the custom building part of it? You know, honestly, we were always car guys. When we were kids, we, we, uh, our dad had a small Skelly gas station. He raised seven kids in a small town of 600 people. And uh, so we really got fond of the smell of gas and oil. And uh, um, we were tearing, you know, if we could get an old lawnmower that we found in the dump to run, we were just happy as hell. Uh, but uh, just always being into cars and, and uh, hell, we had cars before we even had our driver's license. And, uh, but the hot rod side of things, I think it took off uh, obviously we were always doing it, but we were at a car show one time uh, and a, a guy walked up to us and, and asked us to, to build him a car. The first time it ever happened, that was years ago. His name was Doug Hoppy. He had passed from cancer years ago already, but uh, that was a car called the Reactor Mustang. There's a lot of pictures online of that car. And I think that was a little bit ahead of its time back in that day. And that's really the car that I think got Mike and I noticed. Uh, it was unveiled in the Roush booth. Uh, actually, Jack Roush unveiled that car. Um, so, you know, I think people should just do what's in their own heart and uh, and try to be creative. I, I think if you don't fall down, you probably ain't pushing the envelope. Well, I think you should. I think the I think the collision part left us enough money to build these cars on our own in the beginning and then just sell them. And I think most guys know you can't make money doing that. But it was just something that's inside you that you just want to um, build this stuff and create. And you're willing, honestly, to not make money for a, for a while and never imagine that we could turn that into most of our business. Uh, Darren also wanted to know what the size of your collision shop is in terms of annual sales. And, and then a follow-up question uh, we were talking about before everybody got on, how COVID has affected your business. Yeah, um, well, the, the, our, our, our collision is not that big. It's only probably, I'm guessing, around six to 700,000 um, as far as our total business. Um, but it's, it's enough to keep our good guys, our painters and, and guys like us busy till the next car comes in line. Cause like you said, we only do two or three cars a year. Uh, what do you have the people doing? So it allows us to keep that stream in and again, look at all the new cars. Cause if there's a newer, nicer vehicle in the area, meaning other than, um, American made uh, it's probably being fixed by us in this area, at least. So we definitely stay attuned to more than just American-made cars with all the European cars and all the ideas that we take from them. Um, so the collision part is not that big for us, but our hot rod part uh, side of the things is, is uh, much, much larger. And, you know, thankful for us uh, building them hot rods, we, we, uh, we were always trying to create new things and new parts. You know, if you just keep <clears throat> building these cars using the same parts everybody else does and nothing wrong with the Jags, the Summits and all that, but to be creative, you almost had to figure out a way to, to make a lot of your own stuff, like a lot of our carbon fiber pieces and our machine pieces. And that on its own started a business. You know, we create a part for a car and then all of a sudden we get somewhere and people say, hey, can I buy that? And, you know, finally the light bulb went off. It took us, we're not the smartest two guys on the planet, but uh the light bulb went off about six months later or a year later saying hey maybe we can make some money uh, designing and selling these parts so that is a big part of our business our parts side uh along with uh, obviously the hot rod stuff and collision you do a lot of carbon fiber uh on your cars don't you yes yeah um you know we're always looking for a new texture and a new uh you know a new thing um we try to chase a little bit of technology because I, we think it's fun. Uh, you know, why does everything have to be made out of steel or aluminum or carbon? I mean, and, and what's next, right? That's what we're looking for. And we've been lucky enough to hire some really good young kids that help us 
stay current because um, let's face it, technology is past Jim and I, but we're lucky enough to hire young kids and we're lucky enough in our business and where we're at to have people want to work for because of the love of what we do more than the almighty dollar and i think that's pretty special that uh for us that people are willing to do that and do and create because they could sure make more money than what we pay them other places well you know we're drawn from a pool of this town we live in it's 1600 people and uh, when you, if you could come into our shop someday and, and see the talent we have in a, in a, you know, a 30 mile radius that come to the shop and work every day, it's mind boggling. We're even amazed we can find it. But there, a lot of the, a lot of the fab guys are getting older and uh, we're getting slower as you guys all know, if you're, if you're approaching that speed limit. <laughs> How many builds have you completed in your in your history? Uh, that's a good question, Dale. You know, honestly, I couldn't. I bet you fifty, close to it, maybe. Sure. Yeah. Um, which seems like we might have to look look that. That's up. a good question. I think we're gonna we're gonna get to get back to you on that one. What's your guess? Uh, I'd say close to fifty. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a lot. And then to some shops, that's nothing, but. I think we're a little more boutique-y, if I could say that word, because we we put so much effort into them and we don't do truly that many. I mean, I look at some guys' shops that they show us, we're lucky enough to be judging this battle of the builders and, and we're seeing what guys are doing, but we see their shops and they've got more cars in their shop at, right now than we've ever done. So yeah, we're going like the firewood pile. Yeah. I don't know how they're gonna get through it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, speaking of judging, you're going to be judging the old school muscle category uh, for, for the NABC virtual car show. What are you going to be looking for? Well, what's cool about that for us is the old school is that we have never really done old school. So for us, it'll be something that just grabs us like this is something we'd want to drive. You know, what I mean, there's a lot, a lot of cars that get judged, say the Riddler, and it's all about this being perfect or or the most perfect car, not necessarily, in our opinion, the coolest of the cars. So for us, it may be not, not the best fit finish, uh, what do you want to call it? just paint and body. It's going to be something for us that we want to drive and would like in our garage. Exactly. Okay, good, good. Well, that should be interesting to see. Yeah. Uh, Marlo asked, uh, any interesting classic Dodge builds? Uh, he loves uh, the old Dodge Dart GTS. Uh, take out the 383 and put in a 426 Hemi. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, we've never been Mopar guys, but boy, we we've, two here now. we've got two 69 Chargers uh, in here right now. One's for a guy in New Zealand, which has the Hellcat motor in it, and we're just finishing up. And another one is from London, a 69 charger that we're putting the helicopter motor in. Uh, we've already, that that's done. The only thing left on that car is basically to build a hood because the motors are so tall. Uh, but that was the car we were test piling it. And uh, it's the insane. Motor, the, the power of that thing is, is absolutely insane. We got a call yesterday because he's taken it to a different country over there and they won't allow a thousand horsepower uh, in this country. And so, Basically, the motors look identical. So I kind of told him, just tell him it was a Hellcat instead of a Hellcat, because they're only 700 and that's okay. Yeah. So we'll see how that works out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you no, know, Mopars are, we grew up not we, honestly hating them, and now we absolutely love them. We got some guys here that are big Mopar guys, and um, you can't deny the coolness of a Mopar. And God, it's hard to believe if you knew me. 20 years ago, I would never have said those words, but I I'm finally getting it. <laughs> hey, Doug Schluter wants to know how you learned your trade. I mean, did you go to trade school at all? It no, it was definitely the school of hard knocks. We, yeah. we figured out what not to do, and it took us five times each. You know, it's kind of like hitting your finger with a hammer. 
and you know it hurts, but you have to do it five more times just to make sure you knew it hurt. So, I mean, really, we everything we've ever done was the hard way and uh, the expensive and that's the, way. It's the only way you really truly learn in life is if it costs you something. Yeah. You know, if, if things go easy, you really didn't learn anything. You, you learn by what can go wrong, what does go wrong, why you shouldn't do that again. Um, so, you know, I think all the education, besides the engineering part and all that, but as far as putting things together, what and what and what not to do, you only learn by your mistakes, I guess, or what doesn't work out. Talk about a mistake. Funny, funny story. We were very young. I think I might have been 14 years old. We were painting a guy's uh, uh, Cadillac from our small town. I had no clue what we were doing, but we bought one gallon of lacquer paint for it. Which you need, about, which you need about six of them. And uh, so I don't even know why we didn't stir it, but I took it up to the local hardware store. I asked if he'd put it on his paint shaker, and he did. And as I was leaving, the, the, the front entry is all carpet, and I dropped the can of paint. And it, the lid come open, and there's blue paint all over his carpet. And I knew there was no way that I could afford to buy another can. So I literally scraped the paint back oh. into the can, put the lid on it, and said, see you later. And, yeah, and he did it for nothing. And he, you know, he shook it for nothing. Here is carpet's all blue. That, that carpet, you know, even up to probably 10 years ago, was still there with that blue spot right when you walked in the door. But needless to say, I painted that car with about a half a gallon of lacquer. <laughs> It was a little on the thin side, but we got her done. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sorry. Uh, Clint Marlowe wants to know, uh, here's a dangerous question. What challenges, if any, has doing business with family created over the years? Oh, that's a, that's a great question, but I've answered it. Um, being in business, I think with any partner is tough. So, Honestly, I don't know if it's any tougher um, being, oh, being hell brothers. The hell it ain't. I mean, it's a good thing we didn't take boxing lessons in school. I'll tell you what, we both had those guys. <laughs> we definitely had our days, there's no doubt about it, but we've been doing something right for 26 years now. So um, I think the key is, is and we, we're not real good at it anymore, or, you know, mom, my mom grew up with brothers that owned a cheese factory. And when she knew we were going into business together, she knew it was going to be tough because she'd seen it with her brothers. She just said, try not to take it home with you. You know, you guys can tell each other, but you know, when you go home and you tell your wife your side of the story, it can kind of poison the truth or, you know, obviously they're going to pick the side of you. So I think it's important to try to keep it at work and fight it out, duke it out amongst each other instead of trying to make yourself feel better when you go home to tell your wife to make you feel better. So I think the key is just keep it at work. That's really good advice. That's really good. Uh, Matt asks, what's the most expensive build you've put together and, and what build are you most proud of? Good questions. The most expensive one is one we're doing right now that's kind of top secret as far as it's a 50, say a 50 Chevy pickup that looks like it ran into a Formula One car. So that this one is our most expensive build today. It'll be, well, we're all in engineering, but it'll be well over a million dollar build that particular one. Um, uh, it's It'll be exciting. Uh, we should, he's planning on next year same with it. I just, <laughs> we'll make it but uh this k5 blazer we're doing is, is is up there it's a pretty cool truck what are you most proud of my kids <laughs> uh yeah the car. favorite build do you have a yeah. favorite build uh you know I'm just a Mustang guy at heart. You know, I, I would say uh, I would say the car that got sent to Saudi Arabia it was called the Splitter. It was a it was a red and white '65 fastback. Uh, it had a that that same uh, 351 uh, motor in it that we were talking Great about earlier from Ford. Yeah, but uh, that car was just awesome. Uh, we actually still have it here. It's still damaged. They they 
they wiped the car out. So uh, we're tr in the process of trying to get it back uh, for salvage just to use pieces off and actually scan parts of it to, to create uh, new new products. Wow. That and uh, I like the recoil Cheval we did. There's there's some parts of that where it was pretty raw in the interior and, and uh, just a fun car to where an owner just said, I want metal seats and I want a color that's not really about color. And that's about all he told us. And that car kind of whacked a few people. We, we weren't sure at first when we did it, but it's held up. I see uh, there was an article and I don't know, something just recently that called it possibly the world's coolest Chevelle ever or something. So it was, it's still out there and it's still, I think, kind of kind of fun to look at. Yeah, that was a cool car. You know, Jay Leno, when we took it out and he, he drove that car uh, and the video, you can look at it online, but he said, you know, Jim, I drive a lot of cars and people let me drive all. And he said, they'll come in and say, ah, oh, this thing's 700, 600, 900, 1200 horse. And he said, this thing feels like a thousand horsepower. He said, this car is so impressive to drive. It's amazing. So yeah, if you ever watch that video, you can see the excitement in Jay more than probably any other car that we've done. But he's so, you know, one thing about Jay is he doesn't, he tells it like he it tells is. tells it how it is. And you can honestly see it in his face that he enjoyed that car. Nice. Uh, Bill uh, asked, um, I know you do have a lot of uh, children involved, involved in your business, but uh, are any of them in the production area? And what type of su succession plan do you have in place? <laughs> That's a great question. Honestly, none of our kids are in this business. Uh, none of them. And, and we talk about that all the time. You know, uh, is it just one morning we're going to wake up and, and turn these door locks and, and walk away from it? Uh, two old wore out guys, wore out tools and a bunch of wore out buildings. Um, I don't know, but it's something we need to start thinking about. If I'll tell you if the right person came along and, and uh, wanted to learn this trade and, and, and get into this, I'd sure like to meet them. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I honestly, I, I think Jim and I, for sure me will probably fall over in this place, but having a succession plan for our employees is real important. And we've been dodging that. And I think that's just because you never think you're gonna get old enough to not work. So um, everything's the same in your mind, except for the reflection in the mirror keeps changing. <laughs> yeah, you're exactly right. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> um, what do you guys drive? What's your favorite car to drive? I've got a, I actually, I just got a new pickup. Uh, that's what I drive every day. Uh, I bought your wagon. Oh, well, I always like the eighties station wagons. I know that sounds really weird, but, uh, uh, I've got a, I was online, uh, early this year and I found an 88, uh, Chevy Caprice wagon, the Woody one. Uh, the car has 18,000 original miles on it. It was the original owner. Still, he left the plastic from the factory on the floor. Uh, it's a time capsule, and I just think that car is kind of cool. So it's, last time I drove it, I pulled up to get gas, and some guy walks up, and he says, hey, nice of your mom to let you use her car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, yeah, I honestly, I'm here seven days a week. I don't, I don't even have a car. I had a... I think when I turned 50, Nancy bought me a Golf R, which my son has in Arizona now, and he's kind of uh, souped it up, if you want to say, and tracks it on weekends. So um, someday, I would like a Porsche. I would like a 911 like everybody else, but that's probably just a dream. Jim would want a Ford GT. Yeah, I wanted that my whole life. So yeah. want, want in one hand, so. <laughs> and the problem is with us is we we'd like to build a car but then who gets to keep it in their house and i he beats the hell out of everything and i take care of things so it wouldn't work out and we can't afford to build two so we got pretty good odds we're gonna end up in a hearse I guarantee <laughs> you that. <laughs> uh, what what brand of uh, paint darren wanted to know what brand of paint you spray all glazer glazer yeah, we've been, Jim started out with Diamond in the beginning. That's, you know, over the years, we've had opportunities to go 
a lot of different ways. And being that we use it every day and have, and their color match system has been amazing for years. Um, we, we've never jumped ship because of uh, uh, somebody offering us a deal or anything. We've, we've been true to that since we started, since even before I was here. And we truly believe it's the best in the, um, in the business. The people are for sure, at least us. Yeah, yeah. good. Um, Bill's suggesting, you know, uh, NABC uh, does a uh, recycled rides program where the, the insurance company will donate a, a you know, vehicle and the shop works on it, brings it back, refurbishes it, and then they give it away to someone in need of transportation. It's a really great program. And uh, how many cars so far? 2,500 cars they've given oh, away wow. to people in need, a lot of veterans and, and others. So uh, he's, a, he's suggesting that, that that might be something that you guys might want to participate in. And he, he said they would make it a BDD, and that's a big damn deal. <laughs> <laughs> that that's some information. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. We've never uh, uh, reached out to him. Hadn't ever heard of that program, which is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Especially, especially Very rewarding. Easy. Especially if it goes to a veteran, we're pretty, uh, we, were, we were lucky enough, our father was in uh, World War II, he was sunk in the Battle of Leyte, and he actually hung on to a raft for, for three days so that we could, we could uh, he could have the seven kids. So when he passed, we did, a, we painted his casket and uh, machined all little World War II buoys with a kid's name on it for the pallbearers and um, painted it navy blue with a flag and yeah so for the veterans we're, we're all in yeah that's great we'll send you some information all right uh matt says what's the typical build cost uh that you're willing to take on let's see what is a minimum oh minimum build um, dollars that you're willing to take on is cost a factor or is it more something that you believe in the minimum is usually the maximum we can get out of the customer. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, it's a good question. And it, it, you're right. It's a two part question because we do, we have, we've been lucky enough to have some jobs right now where we don't have to take everyone. So we have to be excited about it. And, um, but minimum, honestly, Dale, it would be 300 grand to start a project. I mean, it's just, it's amazing what it takes. It's, I mean, there, you can, there's a lot of places that can start a car. It's tough to finish one. I mean, that's the hard part. Yeah. And that, it just adds up fast. I, yeah, I think Jim hit it. I think there's a lot of people or builders who want to do this and believe they can. And I believe they can. But they honestly don't have the, a clue, to be honest, of what it takes financially to do one when you start buying parts. So I think a lot of them put a number out that they really honestly feel they can do it for, but it can't be done and still eat. And they, they quit on them because they just can't finish it. They can't afford to, they, so they quit on it and then it gets moved to another shop, to another shop. And it's kind of hurt our industry, but if it's hard, you have to be straight up with people and what it takes to build one of these financially. And we scare away, no doubt, 90% or more of people because I can't afford what we do. We would so, rather spare them up front than, than have them mad at us at the end. And that's just, that's yeah. the game we play, you know. <clears throat> um, hey, we really appreciate your time. We're gonna just take, ask one more question. Um, you mentioned that you did a, a car recently for a rapper. Do you have any interesting celebrity customer stories? We've got a few going now. We've got uh, Mason Plumley, uh, basketball player for the Denver Nuggets. Uh, we've got his Chevelle. Uh, we're trying to come up with a game plan for him. Uh, uh, future, the rapper, interesting fella. Uh, uh, <laughs> nice guy. Nice, though. super nice guy. Um, uh, we actually delivered that car down to him uh, at his at his studio where he where he does a lot of his uh, singing and stuff. 
Um, and the honestly, the the guy from New Zealand, his name is uh, Greg Murphy. Greg Murphy. He's a he was a probably the Dale Earnhardt of New Zealand in V8 Supercar down there. Now he's kind of a announcer, but what a nice guy! Came here with a bunch of buddies. We hung out, had a few beers, but really got to know the guy. And you know, for us, it's no big deal. But everybody there, you know, they're like, he's a big deal. You know, he's a big deal in New Zealand. So. To just get to know people, it's like playing golf, right? You love to play golf with people you don't know because you really get to see the good side of people and the real person. And I think hanging out after or before the builds and just getting to know people is is like you really want to know the the real person. And we've been. No, I think that it. works well for us because we're honestly not smart enough to to know who these people are. You yeah. Know? So. <laughs> It's like uh, I I still got a flip phone, so I'm not a social media guy. Uh, I can tell you what, and, and you've heard it a million times. You never judge a book by its cover, because wow, it, yeah, you you can't imagine who walks in that you would think couldn't rub two nickels together, and you're like, oh my god, it's my best customer. I don't know if any guys ever heard of a band called Imagine Dragons. I had never, uh, but they called here and they said. Imagine Dragon wants to build a car. I go, pop the Magic Dragon? I had no idea who these, but I guess they're pretty big too. So. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we've been lucky enough to meet a lot of celebs over the years. And it's kind of cool because they want to talk to you for what you do. And that feels pretty good, but don't get really too worked up about it anymore. We're all just people and treat everybody the same. And that's what they want. You know, we, we've seen Jay get mobbed up in, where he came to a show in Wisconsin here, people literally, literally yeah, were he, grabbing onto him and hanging. He was hanging hiding out in the trailer him. with us, and they they just wouldn't leave him alone. And I felt bad for the guy. You know, I but I can't classy, imagine. But how classy he was, and, and didn't did not shun the guy. Ask him to, you know, please don't pull my shoulder off. It was. Uh, he actually come to to Wisconsin Dells to do a comedian show. We were out there filming with him. He says, hey, Jim, how far are you from Wisconsin Dells? I said, oh, 30 minutes. He goes, I'm doing a show up there. You want to come to my show? And I said, I ain't paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, hey, thanks, guys, so much yeah, for, no, for yeah. joining us for this chat. It was really great. And yeah, again, we you appreciate you, you judging. Uh, uh, let's see. That'll be on the 29th of, or the 30th. And... Uh, for everybody else, you know, make sure you go to uh, nationalautobodycouncil.org slash rides for a reason and check out the cars, check out the cool auction items that are there. There's a lot of good things. So, Well, like, thanks for, no, I just want to thank you, Dale, for, you know, thinking of us to do this and helping our name get out there because this definitely helps us more than I'm sure it helps you. So thank you. Yep. Thank you. All right, everybody. Have a good day and a good weekend. Take care. Right, take care, guys. Nice meeting you all. Bye.